Okay, great. Welcome to a uh, lecture for in machine learning. And today what we're going to look at is um, first a recap of uh, the data distribution. How important is uh, your data distribution in um, solving different machine learning problems? Like for example, what can the data covariance and mean tell us about uh, data shift? Also, how can we define a classifier based on the data covariance and uh, means of each classes? So I'm going to give you a brief um, recap of the previous lecture. And then for today, what we will look at or what we will learn about is the um, a peak of, the, of numerical optimization in machine learning. So these are very basic, very simple concepts. I will try to um, simplify things for you guys. But this is the, this is the fundamental, all the crispier, most important part of uh, machine learning. So uh, in the beginning, we'll look at the, uh, how generally we formulate um, uh, a supervised uh, learning function to minimize. Then we'll look into uh, different into a different uh, optimization algorithms, the ba two basic ones. But today we'll look at what we call gradient descent. Okay. So let's start with a recap for lecture three. So if you guys remember um, what we saw in the beginning of the lecture is like different uh, types of problems we can find in machine learning. So the class imbalance is when you have uh, a majority class uh, where you collect many samples from class one and you have a minority class with the m fewer samples and you want to, for example, train a classifier. So this is a big problem in machine learning because your classifier, it, it gets more exposed to samples uh, drawn from the majority class. So this is why having a balanced class is a balanced classes is very important in machine learning. And the second problem we saw is um, we saw what we call fracture points. These are also called noisy points or uh, outliers. So these are points or samples that lie far away from, from the main distribution of your data. So classifying them um, might be very uh, challenging for the uh, for a regular classifier or learner, uh, or even if you're solving regression problems, for example. And what we're gonna, uh, what I'm going to focus on here is uh, the uh, data shift or what we call data fracture. So look, we have what we have here. We have given a matrix X that stores our 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 training and testing samples. So each row represents a sample, right? And uh, all these samples, uh, I collected them like in training, uh, in a training set. So the, uh, the, the top part is like training samples, the bottom part, the yellow ones are the testing samples. And what we want to learn is a function or a learner F, okay, a mapping function F that will map each input our sample or feature vector into the target output. So in this case, our target is just by it's a binary number. So it's plus or minus one. So here we're solving a classification problem. Okay. So the W here, it's what is the most important uh, thing because F is defined or depends on the parameters W. So the W define the whole mapping process, like how it unfolds, how, how it characterizes this, this learner, right? So um, here, let's say we learned a good function uh, that uh, we estimated the, the parameters W and we had good classification, for example, okay? So if we have good classification during the training stage, so that's a great thing. So it means our learner is learning very well from the, the distribution of the training data. So let's, let me draw the distribution for the training samples. So here um, I have an X uh, variable. So that variable is a single feature because if you guys see the X, each sample belongs to RD, has D features, right? So to simplify, um, we'll plot the uh, probability density function P of X of a single feature. Okay, in this example. So what we have, so let's say this is the probability density or the distribution of feature X. And what it has, it has a mean. Okay, so this is for the training samples. Okay, and it has also a sigma 
TR, which is the standard deviation. You, you know the variance is just, you know, um, uh, squared standard deviation, right? And then if I train my classifier, I might get very good results. But then if I plot the distribution, the mean and variance, but in high dimensional space, we'll have covariance, right? So the mean and variance of those, the training samples for the same feature X. So what I have here, so mu t test and also sigma test. But what we know this is this big shift between the mean. So this is what we call a data shift, right? Or a data fra fracture. It means that, you know, the, uh, the means of the feature X are far away. Why this is the problem? So this is a big problem because um, it causes the classifier, it makes the classifier non-generalizable to unseen data. And this is a big problem in machine learning because the goal to learn from training data is to have or reproduce the same results on unseen data. So a big problem here with the data shift is you cannot know, you know, generalization is is very difficult. So we can say no generalization. Okay, so this is a big problem. Now we saw something else, right? So um, in the second case, uh, we I wanted to show you guys that covariance, variance, mean are also important if we look at the distribution of different classes, not just training and testing. So Let's say, for example, now we want to uh, train our classifier FW, and we have two classes. We have the positive class, okay, plus one, and we have the negative class. So I'm going to draw the distribution of all samples, okay, for the feature X here, for my variable X, uh, for samples belonging to class plus one, okay, the light blue one. So I'll have something maybe like this, okay? And here, this is, you know, the mu of C1, class 1, and this is the sigma of C1, okay? And then for the second class, let's say that this is the second class. I'm going to just put it here. So this is the second class, so I'll plot it right there. Okay, so what you know this, guys, if I leave this, uh, that, that, this distribution of samples um, taken, uh, measured at variable x, like just, you know, the feature x of all my samples, we can see they're far away. So this distance, actually, when it comes to classification, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. But when it comes to training and testing, it's really a bad thing, okay? So imagine if I have a distribution like this. So the classifier here will struggle to distinguish between, you know, class 1 and class 2. Why is that? I'll give you a real world example. So remember when we were classifying dogs and cats and we had our feature X, for example, is the size of on the nose, right? So imagine if your, your dogs, all dogs have, you know, uh, size, you know, let's say 5 something, okay? And all cats have also the same measurement, the same mean. So across all samples, the mean is 5 point to, I don't know, like I say, like 10 millimeters, okay? And uh, the same thing for cats. Then if we have the same mean, we cannot distinguish between them. So, so this is really not a good feature, okay? So if you want to select features, and we're going to talk in the future about feature selection, what you want to have, and this is why I gave you the MATLAB code, is uh, to for you guys to look at the distribution of different features across different classes so you can plot those actually Okay, so when you do that you can see maybe for one feature. There is a big, you know um, Gap between both distributions for some features they, they highly overlap then by maybe learning how to pick the features that are that have the most disparate means then you can uh, learn how to automatically select them, not design them, okay? So this is something to keep in mind. So here, what we have, so we have mu of C2, so this is the mean of feature X across all samples of my second class, and I have the, also the standard deviation uh, of, uh, of my samples belonging to class two. Now, uh, this is important, Variance of the uh, the standard deviation the means are important because in this case they allow us to know uh, what kind of classifier to use. Okay, um, it kind of defines the um, 
the classifier performance or uh, it impacts the learning process of the classifier okay of FW in this case so this is important in knowing how well your classifier will perform now what we saw uh, if you guys look so this is just you know a, a normal distribution with a mean mu and Sigma uh, and a standard deviation Sigma so what is P of X equals something Let, let's say um, I will I want to know the probability that my feature uh, takes value uh, 13 for example uh, for uh, for a specific class so like um let's say I want to know if uh, what is the probability of feature X well here like it's not X I okay of feature X t taking value 13 how to do that let's say the mean the minimum value here the the sorry the um, average value the mean is 10 then what I need to do is like look at the at the at the value 13 so x equals 13 and look at the probability so I get the probability of the prevalence of that feature across all my samples okay so uh, more importantly we generalize to multi uh, multivariate distribution uh, and here what we see we see uh, this is you know the uh, joint probability uh, density function for all features x1 to xd okay and um, maybe it's difficult for you guys to visualize it in a high dimensional space but at least we can visualize it in a two-dimensional space so we here we have only two uh, two features um, let's say first feature x1 and x2 okay and if we want to measure the probability we take for example let's say x2 0 and x uh, 1 5 and we'll have something around there okay so th this is the uh, the probability it may be located um, right there okay and um, the problem is when you look at it in a high dimensional space it's it's hard to figure out the relationship between the features so what we do we project them all by creating those what we call rings where the probability is constant right and the further we go from the mean the probability uh, becomes smaller okay and uh, th this is very important because in a nice way if this is the distribution if my samples uh, have a normal distribution the covariance matrix tells tells us all everything everything we need to know about the class that you know that samples distribution within each, each class is encoded in the covariance matrix so this is um, how uh, we started and then depending on the covariance and the means we defined we were looking for um, defining a discriminant function for a uh, for observing or getting class I okay for a given testing sample X so what we wanted to do is to compute the probability of uh, predicting uh, CI label CI given an observation X and actually what uh, this is this is just base rule regular one and the first term is very important the first term is is what we is the distribution of all samples X in class CI so that's what I plotted earlier so this is you know we hypothesize that all samples within a um, for a fixed class CI they follow a normal distribution so that's our assumption and that's how we were able to define you know derive all the mathematical formula for the base classifier and the priors is important too because the prior right there is uh, tells us if the classes are balanced or not balanced so two things to remember the prior times the distribution of your data in each class and that gives you your classifier okay so here I summarize for you all the cases we saw so this is a table that sums everything up so depending on how we define our covariance matrix okay we end up having different um, definitions of our uh, of our discriminant function okay so our discriminant function here is, since it's a probability let's say if we get for a class uh, if we measure g1 of x and we get 0 0.6 it means it belongs to that class if it's lower than 0.5 it means it's less probable to belong to that class so it's uh, it should it it's 
it probably our observation belongs to a different class. Okay, so that's very simple. So to know how to classify x, we need to compute g1 of x, g2 of x, and g3 of x. So we have three cases. So the first case is where we had different means and equal variances. So our uh, uh, our covariance matrix is proportional to the identity matrix. And here we got linear classifier. And an important property uh, of this linear classifier is that the, the, uh, the decision boundaries are perpendicular to the lines connecting the means, OK? And we saw the special case where uh, the priors are equal, which means our, sorry, which means our classes are balanced. So in this case, what is our classifier? It's just, you know, the opposite, the uh, minus the Euclidean distance. So you can easily program this. It's very simple, right? You can compute the distance between your x and all the means. And if it's closer to, uh, you know, mu1, it belongs to class 1, OK? Now, in the second case, we saw, like, um, we had an arbitrary um, covariance, but it's, it's uh, constant across classes, OK? So all classes, all samples um, in each class, they have exactly the same covariance matrix. So in this case, we also got um, obtained a linear classifier in X, OK? And here, however, the uh, line connecting the means is not necessarily perpendicular to the boundary. So that's one property. And in the special case, what we ended up having is the um, Mahalonibus distance between x and mu i with, uh, how do I call the, um, the kernel is just, you know, the inverse of the covariance. So you can see everything depends on two things, means and covariances. And the last case is the very general case where you have, um, if we have k classes, we have k covariance matrices. And we end up having quadratic uh, uh, classifier in X. So this is the quadratic form. Okay, this is linear. And our our lines are now not lines anymore. They're the boundaries. Basically, they're like uh, nonlinear. Okay. So this is a, a brief recap of what we saw last time. And I'm going to. Uh, share with you this guy. So I created a LaTeX file with all the mathematical formulas that you would need. So I will do my best to try to keep them consistent across lectures because um, for now I'm using Machine Learning Refined of Jeremy Watts, the book. And um, I I'm not exactly using the same notations, but uh, quite close. Anyways, so here, what did we see? So this is important. So um, you can have all the cases, the uh, Mahalonibus distance, Euclidean distance as a special case of the Mahalonibus distance. Also, our Bayesian uh, classifiers, linear and nonlinear, and the different, uh, the different um, uh, scenarios. Okay.